everyone. Join me as I play with alcohol links and resin. Exploring how soft I can get the alcohol links. And then of course, playing with some resin on top to add some extra depth. And then a little bling with the gold. So hang on tight, subscribe, hit that like button. But more importantly, hit the bell so you know the next time I put a video up. Let's have some fun. Howdy, howdy. This is Claire Lawrence. I uh, wanted to do a little bit of a, well, I guess you could say an experiment of sorts. Uh, I've been messing around with alcohol ink. Yeah, the medium still feels very, very new to me. And so when something feels new to me and I, I want to keep on exploring it, I start to push it to some limits, either by adding a lot of solution or the opposite, going and going for softness. So in this particular case, uh, this is an experiment on softness. So I'm just messing with a, a couple colors I picked up. I think there's a, uh, a ranger color, uh, one from Copic, uh, may even be a pinata color, but just messing with a couple drops and alcohol and adding more alcohol and blending it out. So creating soft, soft effects. Uh, start to work with those soft effects, start to blend colors together. Um, so no real design as such, uh, except for their nice warm tones and warm colors that I'm using. Um, so for here, it's just a matter of, let, again, adding more alcohol, blending it out, creating that softness, blending it with the color that's next, next door, and getting a real good feel for the particular medium. And the more you're uncomfortable with a medium, the more times like this of just play is really, really helpful in, in getting the feel or the skill set for the medium. So it's just a matter of sometimes you just need a little bit of play time, and that's what I'm doing here is, is playing with the softness of alcohol inks. And one of the other things I'm doing, and uh, this is what's happening right here, is Sometimes alcohol ink will deposit a really harsh line or a thick line of buildup of ink. And so I'm playing also with adding solution and then bringing it to that hard line and fading it back out. In other words, trying to draw the color out of that line. So you'll see that happening a lot too. Um, and another thing is uh, the tendrils that it'll leave behind too, like if I'm using the heat gun in a certain way and shooting too much power out across the board. Sometimes you'll get those little tentacle looking things. And I'm trying to minimize that as well. And my son is giving me faces and trying to mess me up, which is apparently succeeding here. <laughs> Stop it, Mikey. <laughs> anyway, um, so yeah, we're just continuing to explore this. Uh, enjoy it and I'll check back in later on and, and I'll go chew out my son in the meantime. See you tomorrow. Hey everyone, I'm back. Boy has been uh, chewed out. Well, not really. <laughs> Any rate. So I would encourage anybody that is struggling with uh, alcohol ink to just pick up. He's now he's making funny faces at me. This is not helping. <laughs> We're getting cross-eyed looks. I am not looking at him. Any rate. So if you're having a hard time with alcohol ink and you're, or you're frustrated with it and you're just not sure about the medium, pick up a board, um, have a commitment to two drops of ink. It's not a whole lot to uh, commit to and that way it's not so fearful of a, of a jump. Uh, play with doing a couple drops, play with the alcohol coming in from the outside, blending it out and adding a little bit more, blending it out, and continuing on. And when you feel, hey, I think I need a little bit more color, throw a little bit more color in there. But choose a couple colors that you like, um, something that makes you always smile. If you lean towards the cooler tones, well, pick them out. You know, if your favorites are the bright ones, go for those as well. Uh, doesn't really matter. It's just a matter of playing with the medium. So take a couple of the components out that are scary, Add some in there that you can work with um, and have some fun. So, so far this piece is turning out pretty interesting. I've got some uh, 
nice violet looking colors in there. The orange I really, really liked a whole lot, and the yellow. I'm not sure if I've already removed. Some of the yellow was a little bit too much, and I ended up adding some alcohol and kind of letting it flow off the edge a bit, and that seemed to help balance out the, the yellow. But I really like the combination of this. It was almost like a sun orange type of a color, and the um, plum color made it for a really pretty combination. But, of course, I couldn't stop here. I had to keep on messing with it. Yeah, there's the some more of the yellow. Try to give it a little bit of balance. And I think I added a little bit more alcohol to try to encourage it to, like, eh, maybe just a little bit, but not too much. So this is our finished piece for now. It's very delicate. Not something I normally do. But that's okay. It turned out really nice. I do like the colors, and I go for the, a lot of times, well, I go for all the colors, but I like warm tones. And then this next step, of course, adding resin to alcohol ink always seems to bring it to the next level. So we're going to work with a little bit of just clear resin, and then add some, a uh, little bit of gold to it, I think, to bring up the classy bit of this piece and a little bit of white. I like how white adds a third dimension to it. It gives it some depth um, and it also adds a little bit of feathering or lacing to it as well. So the combination of both really bring up the elegance of the piece. So enjoy and I'll let this finish off. Later. Okay, I do want to fill you in on some of the resin stuff. I don't normally do this in my videos, but I wanted to go ahead and take the time to do this. Uh, this is Stone Coat Art Coat resin that I'm using. Uh, it's a two-part resin, so that means you mix equal parts of part A and part B. So let's say you need 10 ounces of resin for your piece. Split that resin in half. That's 5 ounces of A and 5 ounces of B. So you just mix that up as per instructions, and I believe it's three minutes uh, for the mixing. Scrape your sides, bottoms, edges, and again your utensil at the end, and then mix it up again a little bit to make sure it's completely worked into the piece. Uh, separate that out into some little cups and add your colorants to it. Now the coloring, the theory is or not the theory, the recommendation usually is is no more than 10% of coloring to the amount of resin that you have. Uh, if you go over that, you end up messing with your chemical balance of your resin, and it can affect how fast it sets. Um, however, powders, you can push it a little bit further on that part because it doesn't really mess with the chemical makeup so much. But all I've mixed up here is just white and gold and mostly clear and then um, going in with some lines and a couple areas I wanted to put a little bit more white in there to give it a little bit more of a, uh, a lacing effect that you can see over the color. Now the gold is a just resin powder gold which is really pretty but part of the gold sinks into the resin and then part of it stays on top so it gives a really nice little sheen Alright, some of these areas here you see me doubling up on the white paste and I want to add a little bit more texture to those areas. It can handle it because I've got some color and you'll be able to see the depth that the, the white paste will bring when I start moving around with a heat gun. It'll give a nice little feathery edge to it and so when you see it through the resin it really adds that neat depth and that will come out in, with the detail shots a little bit later on. So I encourage you to add just a little bit of color if you want to bring out some pizzazz in your piece. So you see the color there, uh, the gold on the surface. And some of it will sink down, 
but the white really, it kind of floats and it, it really adds a nice effect to it. So I'm doing a 100 day challenge. That means a video every day for 100 days. So subscribe, hit that bell to get notified when I get put a new video out. There'll be some more art pieces, hints and tips, and maybe some more of those little sensory uh, videos that people have been really responding to. So I'll catch you later on. Later.